Hi, I'm Wade. And I'm Lorraine. And we are On, on the, the Off-Ramp. Ramp. And uh, today we're just kind of doing a bit of a review over the 2022. We've parked our RV for the winter. Oh, that was winter. so sad. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it may not be as long as the winters we had initially thought. Well, yeah, we were thinking we were just going to stay home this winter. But, hey, we had another opportunity. Yeah, <laughs> an opportunity arose. We'll share more of that uh, in some future videos. But uh, we are planning on leaving uh, mid to late January again. And then we'll be gone for a few months. And we'll share some of our trip plans as yeah, we go along. Not as long of a trip as we had last time. But definitely right. a new area, a new place mm -hmm. to explore. Yeah, so two or three months we'll be gone again. So that's kind of fun. Yeah. Uh, but today we just wanted to share some of the things that we've done to uh, winterize our vehicle and uh, to get it ready. Uh, we started with... Cleaning it really <laughs> well. Yeah, it's probably as clean as it's been in a long time. I don't know. Sometimes I go, well, maybe we'll clean it as if we're selling it. But we're not. <laughs> I don't want to sell it. No, no. <laughs> but I think there might still be some sand in the van from, uh, yeah, from, from Padre Island. Island. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there was, every time we take out the floor mats, we seem to have more sand coming I know, out. So. I don't know where it's all coming from. <laughs> that stuff sticks. Um, yeah, so we, we've uh, cleaned it well, inside clean. and out, washed it from the outside. I put uh, I put uh, antifreeze into the peat traps and the showers and the taps, yeah. or the sinks, I mean. The but, drains. But um, we find the blowing them clean. This year we didn't have our own compressor because we moved into a condo. However, at our local car wash SO station. <laughs> yeah, we did. had a compressor on the side, so it took us about 10 minutes and we quickly blew yeah. all the lines so clean. We're so. talking a van, it doesn't take very long. There's no. not so many lines. No. The other so. thing we did is we made sure that it was well serviced. We had it serviced at. Yeah, um, brought it to Mercedes, Mercedes Benz. Mercedes, and we had the generator also checked because that right. we haven't done. And you know, we need to remember to run that generator at least once a month. Yeah. And we don't use it that much, but maybe this next year we this will. This next year we're planning on doing a lot more boondocking this yeah, next year. So, so yes, yeah, so we've got that ready. Uh, we had a new CO2 uh, detector put in as oh, well yeah, too. Our right. CO2 detector was, well, I mean, it's 14 years old, I think it is. And you replaced the inverter. And I put a new inverter in, so we're hoping that's going to help us as well, too. With our boondocking. We put a 300-watt inverter in now instead of a 150, so that should help us with the computer and with the CPAP machine. And, uh, yeah, so we've done all the prep work. Uh, the van has been brought away. We've got it stored indoors until it's time to go again. We'll leave it plugged in so that the batteries um, keep charging in the coach so we don't freeze them. And uh, so we are ready to go. So now it's time to start making plans. Yeah, all the bedding was washed, put into bags, put back in. So all the linens are packed up, but put back into the van in containers. That's right. So we are just have to put the groceries in or spices and coffee and shampoo. Like, yeah, you know, the personal stuff. Yeah, which brings up another thing too, is getting rid of all the food in the van. You do not want an attractant for mice no. or other rodents or squirrels, chipmunks, whatever. So we, we make sure there are no crumbs, no food, no nothing left in there because we do not want to attract. We are fortunate though that we do get to park our van uh, for um, um, at an indoor place yeah, indoor with facility, concrete yeah. floors, right? That's right, yeah. So yeah. we haven't had any trouble yet, yeah. but we're not going to put temptation No, that's right. We still want to keep temptation out of there for the, yeah. for the rodents. So. so today we are at the end of October. And we thought, well, it was a nice day today. It's about 10 degrees Celsius. And uh, we figured it would be a good day just to go for a walk and enjoy some of the local trails near where we live. And so we are at... La Barrier Park. La Barrier Park. Is that what you were going to say? That is what <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> Which flows over, the bridge walks over the La Salle River. Hey, look, there's our shadows. Oh yeah, more shadows. <laughs> so it's one of our beautiful days at the end of October and uh, there are a lot of people just outside enjoying the beautiful weather. There's a few more days coming and then it's supposed to start getting cold. So as we hit November, uh, it's going to start getting a little bit colder outside and not quite as enjoyable. Unless, of course, you dress for it. So Wade and I uh, went on a four-month trip last year into the States. And we had so much fun. We explored some of the areas that we've always wanted to go to. Go ahead and watch our videos on some of the places that we went to. But that was our first long trip with our van. Yeah, it was nice. We saw Big Bend National Park in uh, Texas. And we went to the White Sands National Park in New Mexico. 
Oh, we are on the coastline of Oregon. Uh, uh, Swaro. National, Swaro National or Swaro State Park in Arizona, <laughs> near Tucson. Yeah. Oh. And uh, ah, there's just so many places. We and really, we had, and we learned a lot. We did learn a lot. Uh, we did learn that we spent much more money than we thought we would. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had some major repairs that had to be done to the van. Yeah. So that was a big ouch. But besides that, if we subtract that, what we learned, because we documented everything we spent, and you can catch that video if you'd like, but one of the things we learned, or two major things, is that we should, what? Less <laughs> eating out. Yeah, oh man. We, I, I thought we did pretty good with eating out, and all of a sudden I realized, well, uh, we did good. We did eat out lots, but <laughs> well, I guess more it's than a, we should have. I guess it's a vacation, but I guess, yeah. you know, when you're traveling with your fridge and your stove, there's no, no reason not to cook your own food. No, part of the issue was, though, that uh, we had a lot of cooler weather than what we expected. Uh, and so we um, we didn't cook outdoors. We as weren't much. outdoors as much as as we normally would have been. Uh, we did have a lot of freezing temperatures, and when you're standing in the cold wind on the ocean, on the Pacific Ocean, with a cold north wind blowing in, you weren't barbecuing. No, it was cold. <laughs> so yeah, there's a few things that that uh, we want to cut back on. The other thing we really want to cut back on is our camping costs. And uh, so our experiment this year, well, I don't know if experiment, but what we want to do this year is a lot more dry camping and boondocking. Yeah, those one night stays don't have to be in a campground. We're gonna find places that we can park. We're doing tons of research about, I mean, I get it. There's the Cabela's and the, and the Cracker Barrels yeah, and, and the Walmart Walmarts. Lots. That's not what we wanna do. That's not what we're looking for. We might we're, use one of them once in a while, but. We're looking for, um, um, I guess, free land, government land. Um, and there's a lot of camping spots. We're doing our research and we're starting to book a few sites already. Yeah. And so as we uh, make our plans, that is another way that we can really lessen the burden of, of costs on our budget as we do this traveling. We do know that our first night or two will be in cold winter temperatures. So we will likely have to stay in a hotel. We don't want to sleep in our van at yeah. freezing temperatures. No, no. Even if we're not using the water and everything, it's just, we'll sleep in a hotel for those two nights. Yeah, even if it's one night, we'll see how far south we can get uh, and then go from there. Uh, last year when we looked at it, we left on January the 15th or the 16th. And by our second night, had we thought about it, we probably could have camped overnight because it went down about freezing temperatures at night. Well, we can stay very warm in our van at, the, at those temperatures. Yeah, we just don't turn on any water yet or yes. fill up any tanks. So the, so the issue isn't about keeping the van warm. It's about needing to use yeah, facilities. the facilities <laughs> in the nighttime. Yeah. I know there are people that do ways around it, but that's not me. All right, so one of the other ways we want to try to reduce costs is look for more opportunities for boondocking. We didn't quite have it set up well enough to be able to stay a couple of nights without electricity, did we? No, no. So we've added the extra or the new um, inverter. I'm hoping that's going to help with some of our power challenges. We have two batteries in the back of our coach, uh, which are not running the engine. They're just running the things within the coach. And we can I can run a few things off of there that we need to do. So that should help us not need electricity quite as much. Well, and we actually don't use a lot of electricity. I mean, I can make my coffee with pour through. I don't use a hair blower. We're just not very dependent on electricity other than no. for some of our devices or for your CPAP. That's right. So our fridge is a three-way fridge. We can go either 12 yeah. volt or electrical or gas. So while we're boondocking, we'll go gas and, and our furnace is a gas furnace. And so those are ways that we can get away without using power. I think we'll be able to just trust the system more this time. Yeah. We're actually looking for um, land that's government land yeah. or in, water management areas. Yeah, so in, in Florida, they call them water management areas. Uh, most of the other states, they call them a Bureau of Land Management. So we're going to check that out. Yeah, our goal is to use more and more of, of uh, those types of properties. And that, that should help as well, too. So eating out and then camping, that should help save a lot of money as well, too. Yeah, the type of camping. We don't yeah. plan on really being in any high-end RV parks. No, no, we wow. want to avoid any of the high-end RV. In fact, we found one. Now, we were looking at one of the locations we were going in. It was $200 a night U.S. for a, an RV park. It was for full hookup. It was at the very end. I, I get it. If you've got the kind, that kind of rig, it's... Yeah you know, probably cheaper than a hotel in that area. That's right. But that's not what we're looking to spend money on either. No. We're just doing research. We're figuring it out. So keep watching us and see what's going to end up happening. So one of the other surprises for our next trip is that we'll be traveling with some friends who will be in their own van as well too. So we'll spend about two weeks together in, the, uh, in our destination 
yeah. and uh, get to enjoy van life together. So yeah. we're, we're really looking forward to that. We're going to be gone. Oh, we're going to be gone almost three months, or a little more than three months, and they're going to join us for about two weeks of that. But one of the things that we're learning about this trip is we got to be really intentional about where we're staying. Yeah. In our last trip, we were able to kind of book three days in advance. Our tagline is "Hold your plans loosely," and that kind of goes. We did, <laughs> and we did, and we were able to get sites. We were traveling during shoulder season, and that really helped us to be able to find sites about three days in advance. On this next trip, we're realizing we have to be really intentional. So we have been watching a lot of videos, being on a lot of websites. Yeah, we're, we're being I, more planning. I think if you have the money, you can afford to stay wherever and, and there's going to be openings. But we don't want to spend that $200 a night out of yeah. an RV place. Oh, that's exactly it. So, I mean, traveling is just getting more and more expensive. The other thing too is the fuel costs are going to be going up. So we won't uh, put on quite as many miles this time around. No, we won't be driving around think. exploring quite as much. Yeah, because what, what was it, 16 or 17,000 kilometers we did last time. So. Yes. Yeah, it was worth every kilometer. All right, so in our next video, uh, we will be giving you more details about um, our plans. Our destination. I mean, we're getting, we have to be more involved in our planning this time, so we'll clue you in on that. Yeah, it's a bit of a busier place that we're heading to, so yeah. booking campsites we know is going to be a challenge. We have to make sure we've got those booked ahead of time. And uh, so we'll share where we're going and what our plans are and um, some of the things we hope to get accomplished. But we also know that when yeah. we make our plans, we need to hold, hold our, our plans, plans loosely. loosely.